Whenever I do my shopping at Paran Market, I have to go to Sweet Greek and get a delicious slice of this wonderful pastry. Kathy, tell me about it. This is what we call galactoburico. So I can't say that. Yes, you can <laughs> if you <laughs> break <laughs> it up into syllables anyway. But it's a beautiful, luscious semolina custard mm. in between layers of phyllo pastry and then a light syrup is poured on top. It's Just... really, really good. So and if you it's... can't get to Sweet Greek, this is how you make it. I'm going to give you all my secrets to making the best galactoburico. Fantastic. So let's start with the phyllo pastry. We've brought it out of the fridge uh, a couple of hours before. Correct. It's mm -hmm. been sitting at room temperature. Yep. Um, we're going to take it out of its plastic here. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I know how to work fast with phyllo pastry, so I don't necessarily always cover it. But if you're not confident to do that, then you should cover your phyllo pastry with a damp tea towel. Yes, yes. And that prevents it from going dry mm -hmm. and you can work with it. So this is our phyllo pastry. Mm. This is it. Justine, I'm going to start layering my phyllo pastry. If you could get the syrup on, please, just to help me out so you can get the sugar and the water on. OK, so we've got water. Lots of sugar, it's and we just want that to completely dissolve, so give it a good stir. That's right. So tell me what you're doing here. So the important process here is to make a, a lovely case for the custard to sit in, and we okay. want it to be strong and supportive. Yep. So we're starting off with um, six layers of phyllo pastry on the bottom and buttering each layer. Mm. That's important. And you always emphasise that you love to use clarified butter because it's going to give it a nice even colour. It's just much easier to remove those milk solids. So it's as simple as just melting your butter um, and then you'll see the white milk solid at the bottom, just removing that. So that sugar is completely dissolved now. So I can take it off the heat and add our vanilla. So about a teaspoon. About a teaspoon, yeah. And our lemon. Good squeeze in there. Justine, now that the syrup is ready and mm -hmm. off the heat, can you start with the custard, please? Yes. Um, it's important that we start that now. So heat your milk. Yep. Now I'd like you to actually add the sugar to the egg yolks and whisk it. Okay, we can do that. Keep just bring that big bowl. Until it's bowl. nice and creamy and white. Okay, and that's about nine egg yolks. Nine egg yolks. So you can see it's quite a rich, luscious custard. Yeah, and the tray that you've got here, I mean, this is going to feed... How many An people? army. An army of people. Yeah. You don't make any small batches. I don't, of Greek I, I don't know how to make small batches. <laughs> That's why it's, I love you. It's funny, leftovers. it's funny, you know, because my, my sons will say to me, Mum, don't you know how to make two serves? <laughs> and I say, No, I'm sorry, I have to make a whole tray for you. Take the whole tray. Oh, I just love the generosity <laughs> in all of your recipes. And abundance, you yeah. know. That's ready for the vanilla now, Justine. Add okay. the vanilla and then the milk. Mm -hmm. And continue the next process. So lots of vanilla for this yes, recipe. Yes, definitely. And this stage is quite interesting because, you know, when you're making a custard, semolina custard, any type of custard, you may feel the need to just mix them together, but you want to temper the eggs. Yes. And that just means we don't want scrambled eggs. So Correct. we'll grab a ladle and we'll add a spoonful of our milk. Yep. In it goes. And then we'll quickly whisk it in. Quickly whisk it in. Yep. So we're going to be using some semolina for this custard. For those at home that don't know what it is, what is it, Kathy? Um, semolina is a durum wheat product which yes. we use to thicken up custards like this. So it's another form of product that we use to make a custard with mm. and thicken it. Fantastic. Justine, I think that that's ready now. So you yep. could probably start raining the semolina in. Now rain it in slowly so okay. we don't get... And keep whisking so we don't get any lumps. Yep. So raining it in. And you really want a big pot for this. <laughs> you do need a big pot because um, there's three litres of milk. Wow, lots of custards. Well, Justine, my pastry base is actually ready. You're doing okay. a wonderful job there. Thank so we you. just we just need to wait for that to thicken a little bit and then we'll just pour it straight in here. Okay. So our semolina custard is in the base. And what's next, Kathy? We're going to do the final stages of assembly of phyllo pastry. Mm -hmm. And um, this is this one here. We're going to pop this without the butter on top of the custard. And all these things want here get tucked in. Right. They get tucked in. 
Okay, so we put one layer first, then you tuck in the sides, almost putting it to bed. To bed, like a little <laughs> blanket. And we've got another, oh, I'd say about five to six layers. So we're going to butter them individually and then it goes into the oven. Into the oven. Now, how long are we going to cook this for? We're going to cook this for almost an hour yep. with a moderate oven, 160 degrees. Nice. Kathy, it's just come out of the oven. Mm. It smells fantastic. It smells amazing. But we do need to pour the syrup on. Here we it haven't is. done that yet. So pour the syrup on. Cold syrup, hot cake, remember that. Yeah, it's very important, isn't it, for the yeah. absorption to happen properly. I can hear a little bit of, you know, the sizzle. Can you hear a bit I of can. sizzle? I can. I love it. I love the sizzle. Yeah. I mean, it looked fantastic as is, but once you put this syrup on it... It, it finishes it off, doesn't it? It really it does. It gives the phyllo pastry this beautiful glaze. But um, remember, we just scored it to begin with. Yes. So um, we're going to now have to cut better it down mm. these pieces. That's a really good tip. I probably wouldn't have done that. would have put it, popped it straight in the oven, but by... Having those little lines, yes. you can tell the direction of where to cut the perfect square. That's right. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Look at that. This right here is the taste of grease. Yum. Spoon. Which bit? I think I'm going to go right... Go into the custard. Custard, yes. Yep, custard. You have straight into the custard. Oh, and that feel. Look crunchy, how crunchy, crunchy it is. Yeah, straight into it. Layers of buttery pastry, fillet pastry, crunchy. Mmm, just beautiful. Like I said, if you don't have time to go to Sweet Greek at Paran Market, then make it yourself. You can see it's very easy. Just remember, you're going to need a really, really big tray. Cheers, Kathy. Thank you, and Kaliorixi. <laughs>